And there's no better feeling than leaving the cinema with a smile on your face after watching a happy ending, right? Well, maybe we should have paid a bit more attention because sometimes cinema is hiding a rather distressing or disturbing secret even under the guise of everything being pleasant. Confused? Well, let me explain. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movie endings with disturbing implications you totally missed. Number 10. Immortan Joe Still Has One Remaining Son – Mad Max Fury Road So Mad Max Fury Road ends with the evil cult leader Immortan Joe being killed and his hold over the citizens of the Citadel finally relinquished as the locals' water supply is made freely available to anyone who needs it. It's a triumphant, fist-pumping ending, except for the fact that it's easy to overlook one thing – Joe still has one surviving son in the mix. Though we see several of Joe's heirs perish throughout the film, in the final scene one of them remains – the physically disabled Corpus Colossus. While Corpus gets virtually no character development in the film itself, the peripheral Fury Road comic book series fleshes him out considerably, revealing him to be a fiercely intelligent strategist. More to the point, the comic confirms that after the events of the movie, Corpus follows in his father's footsteps and strangulates the Citadel's water supply, fearing that freely giving the water away to every thirsty person would make them look weak. And so, the cycle begins again. Number 9. Valentine's Signal Kills Millions of People Kingsman – The Secret Service The ridiculous scheme of Kingsman's villain Richmond Valentine involves him giving free SIM cards to everyone on the planet, which will allow him to transmit a signal that turns the global population murderously violent, resulting in a worldwide culling of, air quotes, undesirable people. Though Valentine is killed at the end of the movie and his plot foiled, the film and its sequel conveniently glosses over the fact that Valentine did actually activate the signal for a fair old while, which would have surely resulted in a colossal death toll all over the world. Given that the global population of 7 plus billion, it's clear that the signal would have caused a lot of vulnerable people in particular, like children, elderly, and otherwise infirm, to be murdered by those around them. This would have had a massive worldwide impact. A large portion of the next generation would have most certainly been wiped out, and society at large would surely exhibit major techno-skepticism for the considerable future, setting back human progress by decades at the least. Then there's the fact that the large chunk of the world's leaders were in Valentine's back pocket and they're now dead, probably resulting in a violent power struggle all over the globe. We can only assume that none of this was addressed in the sequel because co-writer-director Matthew Vaughan realised that he'd written himself into a bit of a corner with this whole signal plot. Number 8. The Ewoks Definitely Ate the Stormtroopers – Return of the Jedi Return of the Jedi of course introduced the world to the Ewoks, a race of adorable, bear-like critters who helped bring down the Empire. The Ewoks also happen to be carnivorous creatures who, as you might remember, almost end up eating Luke, Han, and Chewbacca upon meeting them. The misunderstanding all gets worked out, and the heroes end up partying with the Ewoks in a rather rapturous celebration on Endor at the end of the movie. Amid this happy ending, though, it's easy to forget a certain grim implication – that while the Ewoks chose to spare the heroes from being spit-roasted, they probably didn't afford the same mercy to the stormtroopers that they captured. For a brief moment in the closing party sequence, we can even see an Ewok drumming on some Stormtrooper helmets, suggesting that they probably ended up chowing down on them during the celebration. The inference was grim enough that Disney even addressed it in an episode of the animated series Star Wars Forces of Destiny, where Leia convinces the Ewoks not to eat the Stormtroopers. Even if you accept that Leia saved the Stormtroopers from being slow-roasted – I mean, the short is definitely canon after all – it doesn't excuse the fact that the Ewoks have presumably barbecued their fair share of enemy combatants over the years. As cuddly and as cute as they might appear on the outside, these creatures are really feral savages. Number 7. Forrest's son has AIDS – Forrest Gump Forrest Gump concludes with the deeply upsetting revelation that Forrest's love interest Jenny has succumbed to an unknown virus, which is very clearly implied to be HIV slash AIDS. Forrest is now left to care for their son, Forrest Jr., which, while being a sweet and fitting departure point for the story, leaves viewers to consider whether young Forrest Jr. is himself infected with the virus. Back in 2019, the film's screenwriter Eric Roth confirmed that his original script for a Forrest Gump sequel, which was scrapped in the wake of 9-11, would have seen Forrest Jr. indeed stricken with AIDS. He had this to say. It was going to start with his little boy having AIDS, and people wouldn't go into a class with him in Florida. We had a funny sequence where they were desegregation busing in Florida at the same time, so people were either angry about the busing or their kids having to go to school with a kid who had AIDS, so there was a big conflict. Whew. All in all, it's probably for the best that Forrest Gump was a one-off, right? 
Number 6. An energy magnate amasses even more power Inception Inception's cathartic finale sees Cobb successfully implanting an idea in the mind of Robert Fisher to dissolve his father's energy company, Fisher Morrow. The mission was organized at the behest of Saito, the head of Fisher Morrow's rival company, Proclus Global, who in exchange for his competition being wiped out would use his power to have Cobb's criminal record wiped clean and allow him to return to the United States. On the surface, it's a happy ending which sees Cobb reunited with his family, unless you subscribe to the theory that he's still dreaming, of course. Course, but the real kicker is that we've essentially witnessed an already extremely powerful man amass an even greater amount of power. With his one rival dismantled, Saito is a presumably unstoppable energy magnate, and given his noted ability to get criminals off the hook at a drop of a hat, it's easy to believe that he'll use his influence for more nefarious, over benevolent means in the future. Cobb effectively handed him an energy monopoly, and as history will dictate, giving already powerful men monopolies over anything is a uniformly terrible idea. Number 5. A Serial Killer Gets Away Scot-Free Con Air The legendary action flick Con Air ends with hero Cameron Poe killing Cyrus the Virus and all other escaped convicts either being killed or captured. That is, except for Garland Green, a stoic serial killer who, in the final seconds of the film, is revealed to have escaped and is seen gambling at a Las Vegas casino. While this final stinger is intended to be a fun punchline, it of course totally ignores the fact that Green is a mentally unstable man with 30 murders to his name. Even though the stinger seems to present Green in fairly sane terms, it is a ridiculous assumption to make that a man who has committed so much depravity is in any way fit to return to society. Would it surprise anyone at all if Green committed a massacre at the casino or the general Las Vegas area? His freedom is played for laughs here, but the horror show potential, well, it's very real. Number 4. Closing the Oasis for two days per week will ruin many lives Ready Player One So Ready Player One ends with Wade winning ownership of the VR simulation known as the Oasis, which he decides to run with his friends. His most controversial decision is to close the Oasis every Tuesday and Thursday to ensure that people take a break from it and remain present in the real world. At face value, it seems like a very sensible idea, and one that passes commentary on how aggressively technology is integrated into our own lives. Moderation is a key, except Wade's concrete solution doesn't seem to account for the many people whose livelihoods and mental health are maintained by the Oasis. For starters, people actually use the Oasis to make a living. An entire economy exists within the VR world, which will be massively hobbled by shutting down for two days during the week. In a world where chaos and poverty are rife, cutting people's financial lifeline off for almost 30% of the week is majorly irresponsible. And then there's the fact that, for a lot of people who lack the mobility to explore the world either financially or physically, the Oasis is an everyday boost to their mental well-being, allowing them to interact with far-flung friends and experience things that they could never do in real life. Does taking that away from them in such strict terms really seem like a responsible thing to do? Number 3. Rose's marriage meant less than a two-day fling Titanic Let's pour one out for the most truly tragic character in James Cameron's Titanic, and that was the man Rose married after she survived the titular ship sinking. At the end of the film, where Rose is either asleep or dead, we envision her being reunited with Jack on the Titanic's grand staircase, seeming to suggest that despite living for more than 80 years after the Titanic sank, her heart still pined most for a man that she had a two-day fling with. Considering that Rose married another man, Mr. Calvert, and they had children together, it feels like a pretty bum outcome for the husband, right? Reduced to a footnote to service the film's heart-swelling romantic throughline. You can't deny Jack's pivotal role in saving Rose's life, but even so, it's a raw deal for the man with whom she had a life, built a family, and presumably presumably spent decades with. Number 2. Remy's Days Are Numbered Ratatouille Pixar's wonderful Ratatouille wraps up with a deeply heartwarming ending where Linguini and Colette open a new restaurant with the help of their uniquely skilled rat companion Remy. This completely ignores the sad future awaiting the characters, though, that because rats have an average lifespan of around two years, yet can sometimes live up to five, Remy unfortunately isn't long for this world. Given that Remy clearly isn't a young rat, it's highly likely likely that he'll die shortly after the restaurant is opened, which could spell especially disastrous consequences if he and Linguini haven't had the foresight to make preparations for his death by writing Remy's culinary recipes down. You can try and hand wave this reality by assuming that rats might live a little longer in the Pixar universe, but that is a huge reach, and you know it. And number 1. Alan and Sarah are secretly traumatized 
Jumanji. So Jumanji ends with Alan, who has spent the last 26 years trapped inside the titular board game, finally completing the game and being sent back to 1969, along with his love interest and fellow player Sarah, to effectively relive the time that he lost while being stuck in Jumanji. We then cut back to the new 1995 timeline, where Alan and Sarah are married and expecting their first child, and they once again meet Judy and Peter, the children that they played Jumanji with in the original 1995. The kicker, of course, is that Alan and Sarah retain at least a significant portion of their memories from those torrid 26 years, where Alan was stuck in Jumanji and Sarah was left deeply traumatized by Alan's disappearance into the game. Effectively, when they went back to being children in 1969, they had the mental capacity of 40-something adults, which would be existentially terrifying for so many reasons. Not least that you wouldn't outpace all of your peers in emotional intelligence, but also not be taken seriously by adults. Then there's the fact that they had to re live almost 30 years of life, which while perhaps a relief for Alan might not be so for Sarah, who may have been a lot less keen to relive even a happier version of her younger life. Though a veneer of happiness is presented by this ending, it's extremely difficult to believe that there isn't some serious trauma beneath the surface, trauma which even the most well-trained psychologist isn't really equipped to deal with. After all, who would actually believe them? And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 movie endings with disturbing implications you totally missed. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my Warhammer battle reports and my streaming and stuff like that outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself well, my friend, both mentally and physically. Treat yourself with love and respect because you bloody well deserve it, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? I want you to go out there with love in your hearts instead of hate and build bridges instead of burning them because that's the only way to live a healthy and happy life. I believe in you, my friend. Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.